He's our refuge. He's our all, our all in all. And I love Jesus today. I appreciate him loving me. He loved me when I was unlovely. He loves all of his creation, even though we've fallen. Adam and Eve failed to sin. And all of us, of course, were part of the similitude of Adam and Eve. And we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all fallen creatures. Born in sin, shape, and iniquity. But God still loves us. And the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, a lot of people, they would like to read that scripture, quote that scripture in John 3, 16, of what I just quoted. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then... They'd like to close the book after that, and they say, well, okay, I believe. And so, therefore, I have eternal life, and don't bother me with the Bible no more. Don't, bo don't bother me about how to live. Don't bother me about uh, uh, repenting. Don't say anything about uh, the way I'm living. Don't say anything to me. Uh, I've got all I need. It's like I was thinking about the other day, and it's true, that uh, when Sunday rolls around, most people, they like to tell themselves, hey, that they're, they're spiritual. Well, I'm a spiritual person, they say. But then Monday rolls around, and they'll say, well, on Monday, not so much. I'm not so, so spiritual on Monday. Uh, neither am I spiritual on Tuesday or Wednesday. Thursday, I've had just enough, and I'm about to pull my hair out. And Friday, uh, I, I need a tall, cold one. I need something to soothe me. I need something to calm me down. I've had a rough work week, and I'm, I'm going to pop a top. I'm going to sip on the suds. I'm going to open up my little wine cabinet on my refrigerator and give me some beer or wherever they store it. And some of them even got a bar in their house. Or they don't have a bar in their house. They say, well, I'm just going to go down to the local place down there. They call it Cheers. And uh, they're going to go in and sit down on the bar stool and order a tall one. And then, uh, of course, uh, they live like hell during the week and then get drunk on Friday, hungover on Saturday. But mm -hmm. Sunday, the resurrection day, the Lord's day, they're pretty spiritual again. They put on their spiritual hat, they put on their spiritual clothes, and they go to church and they worship the Lord out of one side of their mouth and cuss out of the other side of the mouth. They live like hell during the week and want to praise Jesus on Sunday. And God have mercy. That's a religious and lost person. God have mercy. Those are those that uh, the Lord is uh, grieved with. He's grieved with people that... Uh, Strain it a gnat and, and uh, swallow a camel. And Lord have mercy. These types of things are going on. The church world today, the church is a circus. It's a, it's a place where people congregate to, to not really hear God's word, but they, they congregate there just to be seen, just to say, well, they've been to church. And it's a it's an all in type of situation. It's like a club, and nobody's getting helped because a lot of these churches are dens of the devil. A lot of these churches have a have a pastor behind the pulpit who's not called of God, who's not schooled by God, or his heart is not right with God. Either of those three, and so therefore the people that are sitting in the pews are in chaos and confusion. The people sitting in the pews are confused because the pastor has led them astray. He's probably lost, but he could be backslidden out of the will of God. The Bible says the backslider shall be filled with all his ways. And then the Bible, the Bible says the devil is so good that he makes a person uh, believe something is right when it's not right. The scripture says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of those ways are the ways of death. 
And yes, we're living in that day and hour where people are doing what's right in their own eyes, and uh, people are just uh, filled with their own ways and filled with their own imaginations of their own evil heart, and they're doing what's right in their own eyes. They're doing what feels good. They don't, they're doing what seems right. But uh, they've closed the Bible. It's got dust on it. They don't look at the Bible. They don't read the Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept. They got enough of the Bible, what they want. They think they got enough to get them to heaven, but they don't. They've been counterfeited by the devil. The devil don't mind you being religious as long as you stay religious and lost. He don't mind you being spiritual on Sunday. I mean, he'd rather you be hung over on Sunday, but if you can muster up enough strength to get to church uh, after your uh, hell week, then, um, you know, he'll, he'll go along with you. He'll, he'll go along with you. And he'll tell you, well, you're not so bad. Uh, look at you. You made it to church. And, uh, and you know, you could have done some worse things this past week, but, hey, you, you did pretty good. You, you only flirted with a few women this week, and uh, you, uh, you only drank a few beer this week, and, you know, you didn't cuss as much as you did last week, and, and you're uh, unethical and immoral, but, uh, yeah, you, you're not as unethical and immoral as this other person that you saw at the bar. Uh, at least you didn't go home with someone and have sex with them. But I bound you, you keep going to those types of situations and you put yourself in those types of situations. If you hadn't already uh, been to bed with somebody, you will. Because the Bible says you'll be filled with your own ways. And one thing leads to another. And before you know it, the devil's got a, a toehold on you, then a stronghold. And he plays for keeps. The devil wants to grab you. Uh, you know, take hold of you in the palms and his claws, and he will never let you go unless the Jesus rebukes the devil's grip off of you. But someone must be praying for you, and you got to want help. But I tell you, a lot of people are tiptoeing through the tulips. They uh, got, they're straddling the fence. They got so-called one foot in heaven and one foot on the earth in their mind, but they don't really have a foot in heaven. They don't have the firm foundation to stand on on the earth. They're on sinking sand because they're not regarding what God's word has to say about life, about death, about the, you know, the grave and about uh, the abundant life. They don't know because the Bible is our direction book. It's our instruction book. It's our manual. And they've closed the manual. They've got just enough. And like my pastor says, they know just enough about the Bible to get them in trouble. They know just enough about the Bible to be religious in their mind, but lost in their soul. They got a mouth confession, but they have no heart possession. And I tell you, I'm grieved today. I'm grieved in a lost and dying world. I love souls. I want everyone to be saved. I don't want you counterfeited with it by the devil. I don't want you playing games with God. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, the same shall he also reap. And the Bible says he knows you. He knows me. The Bible says God knoweth our down sitting. He knows what gets us down. He knows where we sit down at. He knows where we lay down at. The Bible says he knows our down setting. And he knows our uprising. He knows what bed you slept in. He knows whose bed you slept in. He knows whose bed your boots have been under. If you're out there committing adultery and fornication, so on and so forth. He knows you're down sitting, you're up rising. He knows everything about you. He understands your thoughts are far off, the scripture says. And there's nothing hid in his eyes because his eyes are over all the earth, beholding the good and the evil. You may think, well, you've done a sin in private, but he knows these things. He knows your sins. He's got them recorded, every last one of them. The Bible says, even the hairs of your head are numbered. And there's not one sparrow that falls to the earth that God does not know. And he numbers those. He's got the granule of sands, of the little granule of sands on the beach, all numbered. And even so, likewise, my friend, he has your sins numbered. He has my sins numbered. Now, thank God, my sins have all been washed away before I got saved. All those sins that I've committed before I got saved is in God's sea of forgetfulness, never to be brought to his remembrance again. And the sins that I've committed after I've been saved. Now, I've tried to, 
to live a life above reproach. I've tried to fight the good fight. I've tried to fight the flesh and suppress the flesh and oppress the flesh and put on the armor of God and the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit and have my feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. I've tried to do those types of things. But even at my best effort, the Bible says we're all together vanity and even the thoughts of foolishness is sin. And we all have foolish thoughts. We all have temptation of the devil. We all have sins of omission. Those are the things that you do because you're still housed in your body that you do that you don't want to do. Paul talked about that warfare in the body. He says, whenever I try to do good, evil is present with me. He talked about an outward man and an inward man. He talked about, he said, whenever I try to do good, evil is present with me. He says, the things that I would do, those are the things that I don't. He says, the things that I would not do, those are the things I do. So he says, if I do those things which I would not, it's no longer I that doeth it, but sin that dwelleth in me. He's talking about sins of omission. I mean, getting angry and an impulse. Uh, having the thoughts of foolishness is, is sin. Not reacting a certain way after you've been provoked or acting a certain way. Uh, when you get out of bed and reviling and uh, just uh, being bitter. And at times you'll find yourself coveting. Well, I, I would to God I had that. That would be nice, you know. But the Bible says, be content for whatsoever state you're in. And, uh, and realizing that a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. He says, beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which they possess. Now, I'm happy for you if you've got a, a beautiful home and a, a nice spread and a beautiful car and you've worked hard for it, then... Good for you. God bless you. And I'm grateful for what the Lord's blessed me with. And I try not to let anything enter into my heart. Now, the devil passes thoughts and temptations in my mind, even uh, sensual thoughts. And because I'm still a man and I'm, um, you know, 52 years old, and the devil knows how to work on each and every one of us. If you're a man, he knows how to offer you things. If you're a woman, he knows how to offer you things. He knows where you live. He knows you better than you know yourself. But we have to cast down the initial impact of each thought. Because if we don't cast it down, like my pastor says, those thoughts will cast us down. Be careful not letting thoughts materialize in your mind. And then they'll trickle down and get into your heart. And then they'll, they'll come to fruition. The Bible says beware, he says, because, because of, of temptation. Because temptation brings sin and sin... When it's finished, it brings forth death. So be very careful about that. Gird up the loins of your mind about with the truth. And, and first of all, be born again. Call on the Lord Jesus and be real with him and, and give up your religion and call on the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And he'll put a love in you for the word of God where you won't want to close the Bible. You'll open that Bible. You'd love to open the Bible. You love to read it and study. You love to sing. You love to go to church. And you don't want to go to the bar. You don't want to go to the sin spots. You don't want to go and drink and do drugs and, and have sex outside of marriage. You don't want to please the Lord who's chosen you to be a soldier. That's the best life. That's the abundant life. And I see my time's already quickly come and go. God bless you. Until this time next week, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.